Welcome everyone um, to our first uh, workshop um, for winter 2021. Um, this workshop is going to be on music notation software, arranging and composing sheet music. I'm sure some of you guys have experience maybe as um, musicians, you've played an instrument, um, you listen to music, um, but um, and some of you guys also might have experience um, composing or writing sheet music or improving if you take it from a jazz perspective of um, music without sheet music almost sometimes. But um, today we're going to be taking a look at mu music notation software and how software has allowed sort of anyone to become a composer and arranger and for anyone to be able to write their own sheet music. Um, so this workshop, I've sort of split into two halves. Um, we're going to start with sort of like an introduction, um, sheet music as a whole, the role of sheet music, why we even have sheet music, um, sort of just a little bit of background and history. Um, and then the second half, we'll dive into MuseScore, um, an open source music notation software that's pretty popular, um, probably the most widely used. Um, and we're going to um, take um, a chance and try to arrange our own edition of Happy Birthday. Um, so let's take a brief moment. I have three questions. Just think, what is sheet music? Why is sheet music? And how is sheet music? Purely rhetorical. It's not even formatted grammatically correct, but you know, just what, why, and how, why we have sheet music, what we use it for. Um, and just, I'll give you like a couple seconds to mull it over, you know. Uh, maybe you already have some uh, answers to this, but I encourage you to think of it outside of the box. Think of something that perhaps um, you haven't thought about before regarding sheet music. Um, I don't know if you guys want to drop those answers into the chat. I can't really see the chat, but um, if you guys have any good answers, feel free to drop them in. Um, and I don't know, Victoria, if you want to read out any that stand out. Um, but other than that, I'll give you guys like another 30 seconds. I guess I, I use sheet music um, so that I can like write notes so that if I'm making any like changes or fingering changes, I can just put on the sheet music and it's a lot easier to remember. remember. Um, and also it's just like more visual. So like if you're, um, if you're trying to like do some more like dynamic changes or anything, then like it's better to just see it visually than to like have to remember it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, I think one of the most important things is that like, um, like sheet music is a way of conveying an idea without being able to communicate your ideas without being, without talking to someone, right? Um, and it's a very, I think it's, you know, a hyper compact and hyper efficient method of conveying a lot of information in a, in a very short amount of visual space. <laughs> yep, that is definitely true. I like how you said hyper compact. And yeah, like super efficient. That is yeah, because I have true about sheet music. Because I because I've written out like kind of like sheet music things in code, and I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, there's so many different fields of things that a single note can convey. Exactly. And then, um, but yeah, so I think that just gave us a little bit of chance to just think about sheet music, um, and I'm gonna pull it over to a sort of. I have a working for sheet music. Symbolic instructions representing pitches and rhythms for the purpose of performance. Um, I've highlighted three words, instructions per performance, and sort of, if we boil it down to that, it's sort of like a notated way to be able to recreate um, a music, which is sort of like a time-specific art. So meaning that outside of its performance, um, it's specific to that time and what music um, notating that music will allow us to do is recreate it in a different time space and honestly as instructions it's quite powerful 
Um, as Isaac said, it's super efficient, very compact. And if you think about it, like if you take like the Ninth Symphony, you have instructions for over a hundred uh, musicians, you have lyrics, you have texts, you have dynamics, and that's all conveyed. Beethoven just, um, you know, put it all into score, and now you can recreate that piece of music for the next 200 years. So quite powerful, and definitely, of course, um, one thing I want to bring up um, is, you know, composing music while we do it through score. Um, it's interesting to note that that sort of is only like the physical manifestation of music, what you would see visually um, versus what you would hear. So I'm going to take you over to sort of another perspective of what sheet music is. So um, I actually came across this article in... Um, in sort of like a discussion between two music producers. Um, so this is, comes from The Wire, which is a um, music publishing magazine. And they talk about sheet music a bit more from the 21st century perspective, but the worst thing in the history of music. Um, and yeah, that was quite a controversial article um, by um, a bit, but I think, the reason why I bring this up in terms of what sheet music is, um, why is it the worst thing? Um, well, if you think about it at the same time, <laughs> um, it's not music. It's purely just paper, it's instructions. Um, in this article, they describe it um, music as say, for example, a chess game that happened 200 years ago. And the sheet music is just the instructions for that perfect chess game. So you can recreate it at any point in time. And sort of, if you think about it that way, um, it's sort of limiting um, in a way that it's instructions, you just follow them, you go through it and you've created music, but have you really? Um, I know for me as a musician, um, growing up as a classical pianist, if I guess the first 10 years of my life, all I did was just read sheet music. I would read sheet music from different composers, um, perhaps read other people's sheet music that they've written. And as a musician, it sort of leads you to ask, am I creating music or am I just following someone else's instructions? Am I um, having free reign over my musical expression? So uh, some stuff to think about regarding this philosophical paradigm between musical score and music. And just wanted to highlight that. Um, but going forward, we'll talk about sort of the process of sheet music. Um, so how is sheet music starting from a physical manuscript, um, pencil and paper. And then if you wanted to widely distribute this, you would engrave this. Um, engraving is sort of taking a musical score and transferring it over into a metal plate. So you would etch out all the symbols, hammer out all the symbols into a metal, metal plate for um, printing. Um, and definitely it's a time consuming process, but it also creates like a work of art. So not, not only is um, sheet music in it of itself tied to music performance, but um, the physical score itself is a visual um, artist piece in a way, because not only is it conveying the instructions, but how do we get it the most efficient? We can beautifully space things out. Um, and of course, um, there's been multiple ways to do this. There's at one point was a musical typewriter um, or notation sets, if you look at right here, sort of like all the symbols pre-made and all you need to do is transfer them over with transfer paper. And then that's sort of how you can get like a perfect looking score and for mass distribution. Um, but of course, this was sort of like the original, the older way to do it. And today we have music notation software. So. Um, music notation software sort of simplifies the entire middleman, um, goes from idea straight to the notation software where you can hear it, where you can play it, and be able to see and make changes in real time. And oftentimes, um, you won't even print it because now if you distribute music digitally, um, it just stays as something digital that you can share with others. So it's definitely changed in how we think about music and how we notate music. And I bring up these six programs, um, this being 
Sibelius and this being Finale, which are sort of like the big two professional music notation softwares. Um, but I also bring up this interesting piece of software called Score. Um, it was released in the 1980s, um, written in Fortran and um, runs on MS-DOS. Um, so it's really interesting because why would we use, why would, this is actually used by a lot of big publishing companies um, for music notation software. And why would we use it? Because it simply presents a different paradigm for how we write down sheet music. You would just write it down straight through code and it would turn into sheet music. So you're not worrying about how it looks um, because it's all been formatted perfectly. So there's definitely different paradigms. And of course, um, you know, you could also write music through pencil and paper, which is trusty and reliable and a unique paradigm for approaching composition and arrangement. Um, so before we begin in arranging just some quick notes on, I guess, music arrangement best practice, um, especially in the digital world of music notation software. First would be to ground your arra arrangement. So a lot of the time when you're working on arrangements, it's easy to just um, let the computer play back to you. And if we think about um, that, going back to that definition of score, it's instructions for performance. So of course, performance would be tied to a performer, another musician on the other side. So think about that um, sort of like um, what you want the performer to play and not necessarily um, what you want a computer to play. So it's taking digital um, notation software and tying it back to the external world rather than keeping it within the confines of just you and your piece of software. Um, another thing um, to think about is to try a variety of artistic interpretations. So of course you can transcribe things that you hear and just write down exactly what you hear um, so you can play it yourself. But the sort of freedom in arranging is being able to take what you already know and what already exists and being able to add your own artistic interpretation, perhaps a different style or your own twist um, to a piece of work. Um, so that sort of is like a gateway into composing where you have complete free reign um, over the idea itself. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you can convey specific moods, you can convey it for a specific or instrumentation of course, um, not everything's arranged for um, full orchestra. You could reduce that to solo piano or um, reduce an entire concerto for two violins, the soloist and the entire orchestra. So there's different ways to arrange music. And the next two bullet points I'm gonna say are use an instrument and don't use an instrument. Um, kind of contradictory, but um, for arranging, it's super helpful if you can use an instrument to be able to hear ideas, to be able to keep them connected to the real world, of course. Um, so by using piano, um, it'll allow you to be able to see the melody and harmony and be able to um, sort of have a multi-phonic um, grounding of your sheet music. And of course, you know, don't use an instrument. You definitely don't want to let um, your abilities as a musician um, hinder you from arranging with full free reign because say for example I may not be a pianist but I can still um, write and um, sheet music in a way for pianists that I wouldn't normally think of so it's very much thinking um, as a performer and thinking um, what would your performer do so um, also being able to slow down and using pencil and paper sometimes absolutely no sound, just um, not even hearing your arrangement will allow you to be able to just sort of hear melodies in your head and whatever comes to mind, you can transcribe that onto sheet music, giving for um, very different um, kind of styles that normally you as a musician wouldn't normally um, encounter. And the last thing is just roadmap. Are you following the original roadmap? Are you recreating an entire new roadmap? 
uh, roadmap, um, rearranging, lengthening um, sections, shortening sections. It's all completely up to you. And to the right, I just have some musical tools to think about, key signature, time signature, tempo, instrumentation, melody, harmony, and texture. Um, definitely thinking about the top three, key signature, time signature, and tempo, um, just as a position to start. But from there, um, everything is sort of free reign and being able to um, just manipulate mo melodies and harmonies um, together. Um, so that is sort of the longish spiel on the role of in sheet music. And now we're gonna take to MuseScore and arrange our own rendition of Happy Birthday. Um, so if you guys have MuseScore, um, feel free to pull it up. And if you don't, feel free to download it or using whichever music notation software is fine. Um, at any point, if you guys have any questions, uh, just shout it out um, and I'll see um, how we go from there. So I am going to start up MuseScore. Let's see if this loads. Uh, oh, perfect. So were you guys able to reach this screen? <laughs> or did anyone have any problems in downloading MuseScore? If not, we're all set to go. And we're gonna start by creating a new score. Um, we're gonna call this happy birthday. Um, subtitle, we'll call it um, SSA Winter Workshop Series Composer. Just put your name. And lyricist and copyright, we won't worry about too much. Um, but sort of this is just to set up a brand new score. And then we'll hit next. Um, and today I will be uh, working with grand staff. So treble clef, bass clef for piano. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, it'll be an interesting opportunity to be able to see um, both melody and harmony in the same page and how they interplay with each other. But feel free to go with treble clef um, or bass clef by itself if you're more comfortable with it. So we're gonna go with grand staff, hit next. And the key signature we're going to be doing happy birthday in is gonna be C major. So I'm not gonna add any sharps or flats. Time signature, um, happy birthday happens to be in three, four. So I think that's the only thing that we need to change. We won't worry about the number of measures, but once you've gotten this far, you should be able to hit finish and new score will sort of start off and create a brand new score for you to work with. Um, yep. So this is the Muse score um, interface. You see your score right here and it's sort of highlighting this um, blue rest. Um, that's where we're starting. So just to take a look at the interface, if you've um, never worked with music notation software before. It's pretty intuitive. It's not too bad. Um, the important things to note are if you look at this top ribbon right here, um, this contains all your musical um, note values. So you have your whole notes, your half notes, um, your quarter notes, etc. And this button right here is N, which means notate. So MuseScore has two different modes, you could call it. There's the notate mode where you're actively, wherever you click, will be adding a note to the um, score and edit mode. So you can click on pre-existing things and be able to change values. Um, so just to sort of familiarize um, ourselves with the software, um, go ahead and click this button, which will put you into notate mode or um, hit N on your keyboard. Um, and this will take you to note notate mode. And so as you can see, if my mouse is hovering over any space, I'll be adding notes to the page. Um, I'm not sure if I'm sharing audio. So let me take a look at that. 
share computer sound, share. Cool, okay, there we go. So this is sort of a mess right now, but um, just hit escape to exit notate mode. And you can highlight what the, the random notes that I've created and just hit delete to clear that up again. So starting off, um, we're going to first thing is change this first measure. I'm gonna right click and then hit measure properties. And we're going to change the actual duration of measure one to be one beat. The reason we are doing this is because happy birthday starts on a pickup. So it's a sort of a interesting piece to start with, but we'll figure it out. Um, so we're gonna go into notate mode. So I'm gonna click on the N and the first note of Happy birthday begins with a dotted <laughs> eighth note, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click the eighth note for the duration, and then we're going to click the dot um, for a dotted eighth note. And then if we click right here, we've inserted our first note, um, a dotted eighth note, um, and it's a G. Um, if you don't want to input notes with your mouse, you can use the keyboard also. Typing in A, B, C, D, E, F, G will correspond to those notes and place them on the page. Um, the second note will be a 16th note. And sort of that sets up our prep beat for our pickup. And as you can see, um, mu score knows, oh, okay. So we're putting a dotted eighth note and a 16th note together, it's automatically going to change the beams and make it um, properly syntaxed, if you want to call it that. Um, from there, sort of, you have the ability to add more notes. And I'm just going to go ahead and write the melody of Happy Birthday. Um, if you know it, feel free to go on ahead and write that entire melody in. But um, if you don't, just follow along and uh, we'll try it out. So we're gonna go to quarter notes. Um, and one thing to note that is, if you don't wanna be going back and forth um, from the ribbon to the score, um, use your um, keyboard, the number row on the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, corresponds to those different um, note values. So that'll allow you to switch note values faster and be able to input those in directly. Um, so let's write out the melody for Happy Birthday. Um, and then I want to switch. And then I'm going to want to add another dotted. Oh, I made an error. So <laughs> I've written an F when I was supposed to write an E. And um, the nice thing about uh, MuseScore is I can just leave notate mode. So now I'm not writing any um, notes, but I can just click on the note that I made an error with and use my arrow keys and move that back down. So now we're all good to go. Now we go back into notate mode. And then, then for the grand finale, a dotted, a dotted half note. Um, I haven't actually checked my work yet, but um, a way that you can check your work if um, you find reading this and just blind and hearing the sounds in your head, um, you can click back on the first note and just hit the space bar and then MuseScore will play it back to you um, based off of the notes that you've given it uh, through MIDI. 
So let's take a look and see if uh, I messed up or not. So yeah, that, that sounds like a happy birthday. Um, so that is sort of the basic happy birthday. You know, I could stop here, we'd be done, but let's just take it another step further and let's add a bass line. So a harmony to our melody. So I'm going to click on the bottom bass clef and go back into notate. Um, and this, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to do dotted halves all the way through. Um, and I'm just going to type this out. So uh, Muse score is going to automatically move forward and automatically pick um, the note, uh, hopefully the right note. Um, so I'm going to type in a C and then a G and then a G and then a C and then Muse score is just automatically moving forward. And then we're going to hit another C and then an F. And then we're going to exit the dotted half note by removing the dot. So I'm going to click on the period on my keyboard. Um, and that sort of just goes back to normal half note. And I'm going to hit another C. And then I shall switch over to a quarter note, add a G and then back to the grand finale dotted half. And there we go. We have, I believe, happy birthday, but let's check our work. <laughs> Click on the beginning and hit space. That's sort of all it takes to um, write happy birthday. Um, things that you can do, uh, maybe you don't like how low this G is, feel free to click on the G, hit control, and then hit the up arrow key, automatically moves it an octave up. Um, so it knows it's a G, so it's just gonna bump it up an octave. We're gonna bump this one up an octave too. So it's slightly different, but But essentially everything else is the same, just a slightly different voicing. And that is the simplest um, form of happy birthday. Um, if you guys have followed me thus far and have this exact same thing on um, your guys' programs too, good job for <laughs> keeping up with uh, my sort of all over the place notation, but um, I'm using mouse and keyboard, but you can't see half the keyboard stuff. So it's all right. Um, you know, we have the basic um, happy birthday. It's almost like a transcription. This is as simple as it gets for a single melody and a single harmony. So let's try arpeggiating the left hand. Um, so this, instead of a single dotted half, we're going to change that into a C major arpeggio. So I'm going to click on notate again. And now I'm notating in somewhere that's already been notated. So if I add another note, it's just going to continue adding um, notes together to make a chord. Um, if I change the value, and I say, for example, I change it to a quarter note, it's going to overwrite what I have right here because it's a different uh, musical note value. So I'm going to change this to a C and sort of it messed up, made some random notes um, that were left over from the previous one, but we're just going to delete them. And now it turns into rests. Um, so let's go back and let's try this as um, an arpeggio or a broken chord. Um, same thing. I don't want all these extra notes. But now I have sort of everything that I need for um, the left hand. So I'm just gonna highlight one measure and hit Control C 
And then wherever I see I see wherever I see a C, I'm just gonna paste that in. And sort of that simplifies a bit of the work that I have to do, um, which would have been a bit repetitive, but so now that sort of we've changed the texture of happy birthday. Um, let's see if it sounds good or not. It might, it might not. it a bit made it more complex but um i think just for some artistic flair i'm going to take that down an octave just so it's not the same thing twice um but that is a simple rendition of happy birthday now what we can do now is let's try to um change some of the rhythms so it's pretty straight, um, straight quarter notes. But um, let's try to add some extra notes that perhaps weren't there before. Um, and sort of whatever we come up with um, is whatever this- Wait, addition. Terry, I have, I have an idea. Uh -huh. um, so is it possible to um, yep. like maybe have like, um, almost like, you know, letter numbers of like A, B, C, D, and then, uh, and then we can like have the, the four or, or however many variations you make so that mm -hmm. like maybe by the end we can see like where we started and where we ended. I think that'd be cool. With sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so basically break this up into letters. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you can copy and paste like this what you have to and then and then but yeah, with letters, yeah, so we can have see the variations all together. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to open up this edition of Happy Birthday, which is a clean Happy Birthday that has nothing touched to it. Um, but um, I guess this will also be a pretty cool uh, way to show this left palette, which I haven't touched at all. Um, this contains all of your extra music symbols that you may never need. I'm probably not going to be using fretboard diagrams. So I'm going to close that fingering, maybe not so much. Clefs, I could change some clefs, but I'm gonna look for text. Um, so these are sort of rehearsal markings. I'm just gonna add a rehearsal marking right here. So I'm gonna click on the first note and then click on rehearsal marking and that'll add a rehearsal marking for that specific note. Um, that, I guess I could actually, I'm gonna move this forward. I'm gonna move A to here. So this is gonna be group one sort of. And then here's gonna be group two. So it already made it automatically a B. And then here is group three. Oh, I highlighted everything on accident. Oops, my bad. Single note, there we go, C. And here's D. So I've broken up into four chunks and uh, my goal for you guys is uh, feel free to take a chunk, um, copy it into your own software if you want to start from there, um, but sort of recreate um, that, those two measures, um, yeah, however you want um, in your own style. And uh, we'll reconvene and um, maybe um, if you want, um, once you've done it and you've completed it, um, screenshot it and then post it in the discord and then I will take your guys's different sections and we'll put them together and see what kind of uh, interesting arrangement of happy birthday that we get um, so yeah um, in the chat I guess uh, call out whichever section you want to do um, a b c d let's try to get some coverage on all of them so don't everyone do d or something like that um, but yeah take um one of the numbers and uh, we'll meet back in a couple minutes. Um, I can't see the chat, but let's see. Let's see if I can see the chat. I shall take A. B. And feel free to double. If someone's already taken D, take D again. You might come up with something different and maybe I'll like smush you guys' Ds together and we'll get an even more interesting arrangement of happy birthday. 
So we have someone doing A, B, and D. We just need one more person doing C, and we have a full happy birthday. There we go. We have a full happy birthday. Now, does anyone want to improve that happy birthday? No takers? Oh, darn. Wait, just to make sure. So we're just taking a number, and then we're just doing our own arrangement, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So essentially, if you've taken A, um, you're going to take this melody. And you are free to change that however you want. Um, just try to keep the like total length of the same, um, of that section the same. Um, keep the key the same? Uh, yeah, keep the key the same too. I'm just thinking, do we want to have polytonal music? <laughs> that works too. But let, yeah, let's just keep the key the same um, just so we can put it together easier. Sounds good. Um, OK, well. If you didn't call out one, feel free to just work on it also. And uh, if you come up with anything, just post it to the Discord general. Um, but I'm going to work on some interesting things for A as we speak. And I will also stop. Um, sharing the audio just for now. So I'm not <laughs> having random notes peeking in the background. Cool. Is there a way to do articulation? Yep, yep, yep. So in the left panel, um, there's going to be something called articulations. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Yeah, so there's fermatas, trills. If you hit more, there's going to be uh, different kinds of uh, hairpins, uh, bowings, I believe, also. Yeah, down bows and up bows. So how do you, um, oh, do you just drag it? OK, got it. Yeah, you can drag it onto a note, or you can select the note and then click on one of the articulations. Got it, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, I think I'm done. Yikes, that, that sounds uh, very interesting. Well, um, I finished, but I would post to Discord, but Discord's on my other computer. So I'll just keep this up for now. Um, let's... So I, I sent my I sent mine to the Discord, um, Terry. I don't know if you're able to see it. Okay, uh, I, let me take I a look. Yeah, I put it under the uh, um, arrangements. Arrangements, yo, let's go. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me get that added in. Uh, what section? Remind me what section you did again. Uh, C. C. Okay. Okay, okay, coming in at me with uh, two voices, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Oh yeah, it's because the I wanted to have the two rhythms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all good. Oops, did I just double everything? Um, I messed up these stem directions. Yeah, I think my stem directions are all funky with the two. <laughs> no so. <laughs> How'd you do no. it that fast? What did I do? What did I do? Oh my gosh. Um, yikes. Can I delete this? There we go. Um, okay, I see what you did now. That took forever, but I think I got it. <laughs> Thanks I I for putting. It. Thanks for putting up with it. <laughs> I think I got it. Okay. Um, so okay, we got we got two of them. We got two. Yeah, mine is the the Mozart happy birthday. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, let's see if I can change these colors. 
or so we can, okay. No, that didn't change the color, that was. Change that to a zero. There we go. Oh, actually, I don't think blue is a good color because that's the color of blue score. So let me just change that a bit. How are we looking on the other two? I'm a little ashamed of what good. I made. <laughs> Everything is good. It's gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. No worries. Let me just make this not neon green. <laughs> Dark purple. Set I was on. trying to yeah. use as many I mean oh, as yes. many like things as possible. So it kind of just sounds very weird. No worries. No worries. We're going for experimental happy birthday. You know, it's a new happy, it's a new birthday every time. You, know, you don't want to hear the same old happy birthday tune, right? We got this. Yeah. Oh, I'm sort of getting excited. Ooh, I guess one thing that I can do right now, I don't know. I made a version of happy birthday earlier. I don't know if you guys want to hear it before we do this. Just for some inspiration. Okay, um, let me pull it up. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, happy birthday version two, very simple. But um, let, me, let me share the audio. So this is, I didn't change too much. I just try to keep it simple. But the only thing that I changed um, is I made it from 3-4 into 4-4. Four, four. So it's a very different feel. It's a very different uh, time signature. So the spacing still play out. But um, here is happy birthday in 4-4, four, four, um, just for some inspiration. very interesting um, rendition of happy birthday um, very syncopated and uh, this uh, interesting uh, reharmonization of happy birthday with some uh, sevenths and extensions but it's just another baseline that happens to interact not only as a harmonic element but as its own voice too so definitely a lot of things that you can play just some inspiration for um, you all as you arrange you can take very simple things and just picture and have something completely different. Um, but let's let's go back to this the ultimate happy birthday. I'm gonna not share screen uh, share audio just to not spoil anything. suspense is real what what is cooking in all your guys's minds in these uh, artistic brains there's nothing there that's why 
no worries. See, the best part is you don't actually have to play it. You can make MuseScore play it, and you can do whatever you want. So, I mean, of course, it's encouraged that you keep it playable, um, but uh, encouraged, encouraged. It's very uh, simple. No it's just no ugly. <laughs> no worries. I, I, can, I can help clean it up um, if you want, but yeah, just feel free to send it whenever. We are at the seven o'clock mark, but it's all right. Did I'm you... really excited. Oh, sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Did you want us just uh, just to screenshot it? Yeah, yeah, screenshot it and put it in the Discord, and then I'll copy it over to this uh, ultimate score. <laughs> Can I send it in a Zoom chat? uh sure yeah i think i could download the image okay yeah i just put under arrangements on the discord channel yeah it's getting intense Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. It's really dumb. It's here really dumb. <laughs> it's really dumb. I'm no so worries. ashamed. No worries. See, see, the best part is there's nothing dumb. Um, you know, there's only things that sound really good and things that sound even better. <laughs> so I love I the will, spirit. <laughs> I will copy this over. Okay. So we got some tenudos. <laughs> okay. Uh, articulations. Where is my tenudo? We got some tenudos. Um, and I'm just going to make this. Wow. That was. Oh, that's definitely not right. Okay. I'm not flipping any of those. Okay. So. Um, uh, should I copy? this note to, or do you want oh do you want me to change it from here the, uh it doesn't yeah. really matter you can just take i just did the three measures so you can take from like any part you can make it a second voice too mm. um, <laughs> <I'll see. laughs> I <finished> it. <laughs> i'll just it. i'll just cut it from here so let's see let's see yeah. that I'll, works i'll screenshot it and then Yikes, I can't see both at the same time. There we go. Oh, that inspector is so big now. Um, Okay, okay. I, I love the attention to detail, the uh, different articulations. Um, so I'm, this is like a lazy way to do it, but I'm just writing three quarter notes. And what I'll do is I'll go back in time and MuseScore has locked those quarter notes into place. And I'm just going to change those to eighth notes and automatically it's going to change it to an eighth note, eighth rest, eighth note, eighth rest. That's sort of like a pro tip if you find uh, putting four eighth notes in is too much work. Okay, I think I copied it all over and I have that memorized now. So let me throw a staccato onto everything. Um, find my dynamics. Have I missed anything? Okay. I forgot my trill. <laughs> oh, right, right. Let me... 
Let me cut. Let me add. It's gonna be here. really dumb. And then we your need trills. It. Your trills. <laughs> These two have trills. Where are my trills? Uh, tremolos? No. Where are trills? Search. Trill. Ah, here it is. There we go. Okay, I think that's it, right? Okay. So Gabby and Gabby has hers. And then Gabby has now. her. Okay. Oh boy. And Gabby wrote hers in nine eight. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. So Gabby, you did part D. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I might change it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how the this. So, um, Is that on the theme of Claire de Lune? <laughs> no. Oh. Is oh, that? Oh, yeah, but I, see. <laughs> I failed at the concept. Okay, wait. So, where do you want me to start then? Um, if, do you want me to just completely add that in? Oh. I, um, I guess I'm sweat it. I thought it was like three bars. <laughs> no worries. Um, let's see. Let's see what we can do. You can just make the last note like one and a half bars. You know what? I'm just gonna. Oh wait, but then you're fitting six eight into two four. Right, right. I'm, well, I'm not nine eight into. When? Oh wait, yeah. Into three four. <laughs> but wait, it should be possible. Um. I have one, I have <laughs> one, and then I have. So here's Claire de Lune. Claire de Lune takes place right here. Okay. Um, wow, making me go through all this. Okay, I got this. Let's see. Let's work backwards, because I think, I think this will be easier. <laughs> um, all right, should I convert the time signature or no? Or should I just read time everything? Might, uh, if it's easier, maybe to convert it um, at that bar, but. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, we got the last measure. <laughs> um, Gabby, is your bottom line supposed to be like in bass clef and it's written in treble? No, clef? treble. Oh, this double treble clef? Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to piece this into my head. How do I? <laughs> Okay, I think um, try. I'm going to I'm just gonna share audio um, just so we see this madness. Straight. Make this a, oops, make this a four. And then we add a G up there. Okay. I think I've kept the structural integrity of it and then um, I just realized that's treble clef and I've been writing bass clef but copying the same thing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I just I talked about that. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Oh. 
that means this is a C. Okay. Um, shift that up an octave and bring it a third down and correct for that. Okay. Um, I think it might work out, perhaps. Uh, let me color everything properly. View inspector. And let's color this. Set color. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Um, oh man, I missed a note. That might not be the actual color, but oh, duh, why is there no? I missed the rest. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so color. I'm just gonna recolor this entire thing. color you know what i'll fix that later <laughs> okay so i'm sure you guys have been waiting to hear how this happy birthday sounds so uh drum roll please um and let me throw a forte on this just to make sure that uh everything doesn't become piano because of victoria's piano <laughs> You can put mine back at forte too. Cause... Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put a forte here. Um, and I think that should be. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's take a listen. Simplest one. <laughs> I tried. No, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was yeah. very. The toy was as good. <laughs> the the the, the trills made the trills entirely made the piece. Yes. Made it better. You gotta make yeah. that into a, like a ring. It has to be a ringtone, like for someone's phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You should export um, it as an MP3 file and I put will, it in the Discord. I, yeah. I will um, export this. I will share the MuseCore file onto the MuseScore website and link that so you guys can play this whenever you want. I will make it into yeah. a ringtone also. Um, and yeah. Um, we'll put our names on the score, all four of us. <laughs> I'll put I'll put, I'll put, put entirety of SSA, yes. But yeah, um, that is MuseScore, digital music notation software. And yeah, thank you all for attending to this. Uh, Wait, can you play one more time? <laughs> can you one play time? one more time? <laughs> Wasn't one enough. more time. I one For more all time. the anxiety that caused me. <laughs> So it starts with a bit of jazz. We have some uh, Haydn Surprise Symphony-esque stuff here. And then we have a Mozart um, original variation. And then we have some, uh, we can call it impressionistic um, reduction from 9-8 to 3-4. Um, <laughs> and a triumphant chord at the end. So, you know, we've put all the tools in our musical toolbox into this masterful arrangement of Happy Birthday.